study of the book of Ecclesiastes. Remember now thy creator is this series of messages with this theme to call the people of God in the days of their strength do not forget the one who is the source of their blessing. Tonight's devotion in his time. This morning, we were studying the life of Joseph in the beginnings of the Hebrew Nation series. We saw Joseph in prison in Genesis chapter 40, a man in his 20s. And the chapter started with two men, a butler and a baker, who were cast into prison for offending Pharaoh. Pharaoh was the most powerful man in the known world at that time. And Joseph was assigned by the captain of the prison to serve these two prisoners as he was right, serving all the prisoners that uh, came into the prison house. Right? The jailer or the captain of the prison assigned him uh, this good task right, of serving all the rest. And it is recorded that these two men, the butler and the baker, each had a dream by night. And the next morning, Joseph, who came to wait upon them, found them with a sad countenance. And they shared their dream with Joseph and their plight, although in prison, a most trying time for a young man, you find that this man has a close relationship with the God of Israel. The Lord God of Israel showed Joseph the interpretation of the dream. He was able to tell the baker that he would face the wrath of the Pharaoh, losing his life, while the butler would be restored. And Joseph thought it would be an opportune time to be released from prison by the help of the grateful butler. Well, he thought that the butler would be grateful, you know, and come back uh, with uh, an order to, for his release from prison. Instead, the, our text tells us at the end of Genesis 40 that he was, when he was restored, restored to the palace, he forgot about Joseph. I entitled the devotion for this morning with two thoughts. Oh, it, was, it, it has the same title, In His Time. And it's interesting that you know, we are studying that same chapter. And two thoughts this morning, hope alive and hope dashed. Saying to our Bible study group that you know, there are some times when we find ourselves in the inadvertent seasons of life. A time of hope and then a time of disappointment was Joseph's lot in life during those turbulent early years. I, I said, if we have not got in the equation in Joseph's life, we might have thought those to be wasted years in Joseph's lives. Right? Sometimes God makes us go through the wintry seasons of life where we have to wait. And we were wondering, why are we waiting? What are we doing with our life? Right? We don't understand. But we saw that God was in charge of ordering Joseph's lives. And he makes no mistake in ordering the lives of people and this created world. And he makes no mistake in also ordering your life. And the Lord wants you to know. And I said this morning, we can trust God through the seasons of life. A time in prison, a time out of prison. This is a wintry season in Joseph's life. And it is in this winter seasons of life that we need to exercise faith in trusting God as we see Him work out His good will in our lives. And we also know 
that after winter, or when winter would soon end, and then spring and summer will come, right? you will see life budding again. And it, but it is through the winter seasons of life that we become wiser, deeper, and stronger. Through the failures, so-called, through the difficulties, through the challenges of life, right? um, and the winter season, we said, is a time to look up, to be still, and to discover anew that He is God. To draw close to Him in personal devotion and prayer, and to know that He is doing whatsoever He pleases in your life. And sometimes we don't understand, you know, and we tend to fret if we are not still before God. Joseph certainly has a deeper walk with God revealing to him the future to him. What great access he had to the mind of God, to the will of God. Right, you'll find that this interpretation of dream that God gave to him would put him in good stead when he would be called to interpret Pharaoh's dream of the seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And you find that the fortune of Joseph is going to, to turn and that he's not going to remain in prison forever. He will look back with gratitude at how God would turn around his situation to use him to provide a home for his people in Egypt for the next 400 years. We look at Joseph's life with hindsight and we are reminded of Solomon's words in our text today in Ecclesiastes 11, 3 verse 11a. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Not Joseph's time, but God's time. Not your time, but God's time. And God has a good plan and purpose for your life, just as He has shown it through Joseph's life. Right? And one uh, writer, he puts it very well. He wrote a book specifically for this uh, few verses of the Bible. And uh, he observed and he said very well, a time for every purpose under heaven. And he says primarily the word purpose or pleasure has to do with God's design for the creatures of His hand. And we need to know right, that we have a Creator who has made us and He not only designed our life, right, but uh, He will enact it right, through all the various uh, what we call coincidences, uh, uh, no coincidence. Right? God orchestrated every event in our lives. And the time and the seasons of life, then you find, takes on meaning and significance. And Solomon tells us that when we understand that there is God seated and thrown in heaven, in charge over all the affairs of men, you realize that there is no place for chance or accident, but all in the good hand of God. And so if you are a child of God, would you feel assured? Would you feel strengthened in your heart that you are not alone in this, at this stage of your life, at this juncture of your life? Right? Whether you are waiting, whether you are moving, God is there. And so we have three precious thoughts to consider from this Precious verse. A sovereign God, verse 11a. A sense of eternity, verse 11b. A scientific limitation, verse 11c. He hath made everything beautiful in His time. Now we want us to consider this first thought. A sovereign God. The word beautiful literally means lovely. The word there is, is, is exactly that. Beautiful. And we have 
God, when we have God in perspective of life, uh, one pastor puts it, our times become sensible and meaningful. When all that falls together, when the pieces of puzzle fit together in, into one another, beauty emerges. Right? So, as you go through the jigsaw puzzles of life, you, know, you don't know why God brings you through ex certain experiences. You don't know why God brings you through you know, the thick and the thin, as we said this morning, the fire and the water, prison and out of prison. But out of it all, right, uh, we see a beautiful picture emerging out of your life. And he continues to say, does it not remind you of a chorus of worship, Christians love to sing when they gather. It was born out of this statement in the book of Ecclesiastes. Right? There's this song, you remember? Uh, in his time, in his time, he makes all things beautiful. In his time, Lord, please show me every day as you're teaching me your way, then you do just what you say in your time. The Lord wants us to see all right, that, you know, indeed it is not our time, but God's time. And there are those wintry seasons in life. And we need to be still, learn to be still before God, to wait upon Him, to look up. Right? to prepare ourselves for springtime, for summer to come. I'm reminded of a poem that the late uh, elder To Siang Yao wrote in his reflection of this passage. Right? This is what he says. Time, thou unfathomable entity, inscrutable and intangible, beginning in the midst of antiquity, lasting till the end of time variously described by sages, illimitable, never resting thing, rushing swift and silent, the subtle thief of youth, an ever flowing stream that bears all its sons away. Yet, he reflected, he says, a gift of God to all, as it is that staff the staff that life is made of. For does not Solomon intone, there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 2. A time when we were young and naughty, viewing the world through blinkered eyes and scorned with doting mums and dads, a time to live the roost, learning to fly the hard way. One day, soaring aloof, the nest is empty, the scene is over, time to be reminisced. It's God's allotted time to run the race, patiently and unswervingly to victory, or straying from the straight and narrow path, regretfully falling by the wayside. So he's painting to us, you know, there are two ways that we can go. Right. So teach us, he concluded, O Lord, to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. He quoted Psalm 90 verse 12. Ever prepared to be on time, he says, for that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our Saviour Jesus Christ. And at the last trump, to be ever with the Lord, Amen. Elder Dr. To Siang Yao, 6 November 1927 to 25th November 2015, age 88. And I was looking at the picture at the tombstone. Right, the tombstone has two verses. I love the Lord because He has heard my voice and supplications. Very interesting verse to select. Right, someone who realize that he needs God right, through the wintry seasons of life. Precious in the sight of the Lord is His saints. Psalm 116 verse 15. 
There is a creator God, dear friends, who loves us and made us and placed us here upon earth. And he we shall see face to face in the heavenlies when this passing world is done. Remember the words of Robert Murray McChain, right? the, the missionary who died at a very young age. And he wrote these words. When this passing world is done, and we stand with God on high, looking over life's history, looking over time, then shall I fully know, not till then, how much I owe. The glory of the heaven to come. Where is the prophetic clock ticking? I believe ticking toward the time of our blessed hope when Jesus will return to receive the church to glory. It is no accident that God gave us our church name, Blessed Hope, BP Church, right, as an end time, last hour witness for the Lord, and now located in the building in the shape of Noah's Ark. Creepy. Come to think of it. But we serve a sovereign God who knows what He is doing. And over the last week or so, we have been surveying the prophetic landscape of the world. And Israel, we see, has been in the land now for the last 68 years. It can't be long before our Lord will have to return. Could we be the last generation to see the rapture? Not unlikely. All the signs are pointing to the imminence of Christ's return. A time of consummation is coming. A fearful time of judgment for the unbelieving at the great white throne or at the, at the great tribulation. But a blessed time of reigning in Christ is coming for believers in the millennium where the earth will return to its Edenic state. You know, today we look at the animal world. We see ferocity. We see wildness. Where did that come from? When God created the animal world, it was not like that. And, you know, the Bible tells us that He will restore the Edenic state to this world. In a time coming soon, a thousand years, right, where the lamb will dwell safely with the lion, God will take away that, for, that, that ferocity. The lion will be tamed like the lamb. So the Lord wants us to know, then eternity will begin. This present heaven and earth will be destroyed and God will recreate a new heaven and a new earth wherein there shall be no more sorrow, no more tears, no more pain, no more sin, no more judgment. The Bible says the former things are passed away. He that overcometh shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son. Are you ready for that blessed hope? The time is really coming very, very near, even at the doors. In our generation, we can view life like the Enoch of old before God bodily took him to heaven. The Bible says Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him twice, the Bible recorded. Enoch walked with God. He lived a life of fellowship and close communion with God where the power of God flowed in his life. And this is a kind of life we ought to live in the days leading to the rapture of the church. And if you are willing to serve the Lord, you'll be assured that God's presence, God's power, as he has promised, will be with you. We know that the prophetic clock 
in God's calendar for this world. As Peter said, nevertheless, we, according to his purpose, look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness, beloved. Ye seeing, ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Right, and Peter ended his epistle, he says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Let God's blessing continue to abound in your life. That's the meaning of the word grace. Right? And the Bible tells us that God's purpose in relation to this earth that we live in is threefold. Right? There's this writer which I've mentioned, Stephen F. Oldford. Right? He made a very good observation. He says that there is the creative purpose of God. He hath made everything beautiful in His time. And he says this was the divine verdict on everything that God created. He saw everything that He had made and it was very good. Genesis 1, 31. And that's why Solomon says in verse 14, we shall see this next week, but that's the context. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Now, God does great things. All right? And God is, going to, is using you to do great things that last forever. Do you realize that nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it? And God doeth it, that men shall fear, should fear before Him. So into that paradise of beauty. However, uh, the Bible tells us that Satan came and spoiled it all. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And so we see, you know, God's creative purpose for the world and then you see men fell and then God immediately right, provided the next step, His redemptive purpose. And that's where we are in. Right? God called us from darkness into His marvellous light. God save us. And following the call of men, uh, God introduces that redemptive purpose. Right? That's our second thought. A sense of eternity, verse 11b. Also, he has set the world in their hearts. Right? This word world means eternity. Right? It's an old English word that means not the world as we know, but rightly as the King James translator used when we sing the Gloria Patri. World without end. Right? It refers to the age to come, eternity. So God has placed in man, created in His image, a higher sense in our hearts. Right? God puts a sense of Himself, of eternity, of judgment in our hearts. Right? You notice that since the beginning of man's history, man seeks to worship a being that is larger than himself, right? Throughout man's history, is like that. That he could find help, he could find refuge, and he could find prosperity in life. And uh, Oford said once again, uh, he said it very well, only the New Testament can interpret these words, for it is the gospel alone that tells us that because of the Saviour's work on the cross and His triumphant resurrection, God can put not only eternity, but life and life more abundant into man's heart. Right? As the thief, as Jesus said, right? the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus says, I come that ye might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And so, if man were to reject this redemptive purpose of God, 
then there is no help. There is no help for him. Right? And he would fall into what we call God's corrective purpose, which is his judgment to come. Right? That which verse 15 of Ecclesiastes 3 says, hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been, and God require that which is past. And moreover, he says, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. And I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time there for every purpose and every work. Right? God's judgment awaits the unbelieving and the impenitent. And you see, not only is uh, God's purpose is for His creative, uh, for, 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 for the creation of this world, but it was also for redemption. And finally, right, Old Ford said, for the achievement of God's glory. And it's interesting that I believe he has uh, put it rightly. There is a time to every purpose under heaven. And the words under heaven, not only is a reference to this earth, but a reminder that everything that happens on this planet is under the eye of God and therefore is to be done to the glory of God. God wants us to know right, that nothing is happening by chance in this world and God is working out His redemptive purpose for His glory. And the Lord wants us to know that purpose. And God has placed in us enough sense to be able to know. Right? Paul says, right, he observed, huh, that if man were to reject his Creator, he is cul culpable. Right? Romans 1, 19 and 20. Two reasons, right? and Romans 2, 14 to 16. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Right? You look at the creation. So wonderful. Right? What is the purpose of creation? Remember during our church camp, we have been speaking about this. Right? Why did God create, it? create the camel? Why did God create, it? create uh, beauty in this world? It's for men to appreciate, right? No other being, the lower forms, the animals cannot appreciate the beauty of this created earth. Right? What does it point us to? Point us to the Creator who has created all things. And then he tells us that in Romans 2, that there is also the conscience that God plays in your heart to know that there is God. Right? For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these, having not the law, are a law unto themselves. We showed the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Christ Jesus, according to my gospel. So the Lord wants to tell us right, that you know, the Ten Commandments is what God gave during certain some point in man's history. But the laws of God has been eternally given in the hearts of men. You don't need the commandments to tell you that you have done something wrong. Right? Your conscience will cause you to have no peace. That's what the apostle says. That we are made in the image of God. The laws of God written in the hearts of the Gentiles, that they have no excuse. So God gives to us by natural <coughs> revelation in His creation, <coughs> the knowledge to acknowledge His creative power and the conscience that He places in man to worship a being that is larger than Himself. And that is prevalent, pre prevalent we said, in human history. And then thirdly, a scientific limitation, verse 11c. So that no man can find out the work 
that God maketh from the beginning to end. There is a limitation that God has placed to man's knowledge of science in understanding creation. God has given to us His Word, right? the supernatural revelation of God to help us to know Him, to help us to understand the created world. I remember men thought that the world was flat, right? that you sail to the end of the, the, the ocean, you would fall down, you fall into an ab abyss. <laughs> you know, there was that fear. But when they had the Word of God, they knew that the world, the world was the world was round. So if they were able to see the created universe through His Word, right, we have an idea to understand God. So God not only gave to us His na the natural revelation, but supernatural revelation in His Word right, to help us to piece things together. you realize that the knowledge that we have, the revelation of God's Word and all that we, we have still right, do not allow us to understand God that fully. Right. There is still a limitation. And you know, that's why Joseph said in the latter years of his life, right, of God's purpose, for his life. He said in Genesis 50, 20, But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. So when God was bringing him through the prison, you know, when he was forgotten in prison and God asked him to wait, and by the way, he had to wait another two years a long time to be in prison. Right? If you are 20 years old, you know, two years <laughs> during those times, very precious. But God allowed him. Right? God was working out something. Joseph had to wait upon God to lead him step by step in his life to fulfill his good will for his life. And you'll find that for your life too, you don't have a full picture, a crystal ball to see the future. Right? But God gives to you clues. Right? He showed to you right, what the world is going to be right? through the prophetic scriptures. We have the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel, many parts of the Old Testament, many parts of the Gospels to tell us that, you know, to lead us, to guide us. Right? So here, the last thought tells us uh, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to, to the end. Right? You know that God has done something in our lives. There's something special that He has placed in us to know Him. Right? That emptiness, until you become a child of God, then, you know, life fits. You see, that's, the, that's my experience. Right? Before knowing Jesus Christ, nothing goals, but after knowing Jesus Christ, everything falls in place, everything falls together, then this must be the experience of every child of God. Jesus says to his disciples, right, uh, as Joseph saw, when you have God with you, he's all wise, all powerful, all present, guiding, caring, blessing, as he abides in him. That's why we come for prayer meeting, because we want to know the will of God. We seek to draw close to understand the mind of God. Right? And if you are in the wintry seasons of your life, you know that you are not alone. God is with you. The good times will come. Right? You are willing to wait upon God, to abide in him. Jesus says to his disciples, John 15, 5 to 8, I am the vine, Ye are the branches, he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For ye, for without me ye can do nothing. Ye, if ye abide not in me, he is a branch, he is cast off as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them and cast, into the, cast them into the fire, and they are burned. 
If ye abide in me and my words in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. The creative, the redemptive, the glory of God. May God help us to live for His glory as we await the consummation, the time of redemption. A sovereign God, a sense of eternity, a scientific limitation. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank Thee for Thy Word. Thank Thee for guiding us into this text to know that You will make all things beautiful in our lives. And Lord, during the seasons of life, help us to be willing to wait upon Thee. Help us to be willing to do our duties, continue to serve Thee, continue to hope in Thee as You work out Your good purpose and plan for our lives. O oh God, you, we know that You always do us good. And Lord, may Thou help Thy people to not be despondent in times of disappointment, but to continue to trust in Thee, to hope in Thee, to continue to serve Thee. This I pray with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name. Amen.